third theme of the course uh, focuses on the econometric approach to efficiency analysis, uh, uh, usually referred to as uh, stochastic frontier analysis, or SFA. Uh, to pave a way to the development of SFA, I'll start with the so-called prehistory of the, of the SFA, discussing the parametric approach. So if you recall this uh, taxonomy of approaches that I uh, introduced them during the introductory lectures, so, so far we have uh, covered the data envelopment analysis, DEA approach that uh, I've indicated here with the red color. And uh, today, I will, on the, in this lecture, I will focus more on this uh, uh, developments of the parametric approach prior to the SFA, which I have indicated with the blue color. I believe that this is essential information to, to fully understand and appreciate also the developments of, of SFA. So let us start from the least squares regression in, uh, in economics and the context of production functions. And to that we can go to the late 20s of the, of the development of uh, Cobb and Douglas uh, who um, introduced this very famous production function uh, which is also used widely in other other contexts, not just in production, but also also in uh, economic theory. It's frequently used for the for the utility functions, for example. So uh, this uh, Cobb Douglas production function is a very convenient parameterizations in 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 many ways. So if you think about the in the first uh, first equation where the output is expressed. Uh, um, in the way that uh, the, there are the, the product of, uh, of uh, contributions of inputs uh, and each input is uh, raised to power beta s. And, uh, and this uh, deterministic part of the production function is multiplied by the contribution of noise, which also enters in a, in a multiplicative fashion. So this multipli multiplicative uh, a contribution of the noise term is, is uh, very convenient uh, in the sense that, uh, um, for example, uh, if the if the impact of noise is larger in the in the larger units, then then this uh, this kind of multiplicative structure takes it into account. Furthermore, this kind of functional form can be conveniently linearized by taking natural logarithms of uh, of both sides of equations. So then we have the log of output on the left hand side, and then we have the the sum of, of uh, beta s times the logarithm of, of x variables. And uh, I, I should also point out that we have this constant uh, constant a capital A. So we take logarithm of a also, which becomes the intercept term for this kind of uh, model. So the second equation is then, uh, although it's not linear in terms of uh, x and y variables, it's actually linear in terms of uh, unknown parameters, these betas and, and log of a and, and uh, the error term. So therefore, this Cobb-Douglas model can be estimated by just a linear regression. Um, I want to still a uh, couple of points about this, uh, this production function. So why Cobb-Douglas uh, production function is very convenient and, and is also still widely used even in uh, modern stochastic frontier analysis. So a couple of nice properties are that uh, these coefficients beta s have an appealing interpretation as output elasticities. In practice, it means that uh, uh, if we increase uh, input s by 1% and keep all other inputs constant, then uh, output increases by beta s percent. So these coefficients beta have very, very intuitive in, in, in the interpretation as the output elasticities of inputs. We can also immediately calculate the scale elasticity as the sum of these beta s parameters. So if we sum over all betas, we have the scale elasticity. And further, we know that uh, if the production function ex exhibits constant returns to scale, or CRS, as we have abbreviated it before, then uh, the sum of these beta parameters is equal to 1. So this also then allows us a very, very simple way to, or, or means to impose constant returns to scale if we want, 
And we, it's also quite easy to test for constant returns to scale hypothesis uh, using the Cobb Douglas production function. But besides these um, appealing features, um, uh, in many cases, Cobb Douglas production function is also extremely restrictive. Uh, and particularly, uh, we should note that uh, the elasticity of substitution between any pair of inputs is equal to one by construction. So the, all it, it, this functional form assumes unit elastic uh, uh, substitution between inputs. No matter what the parameter values beta are, the substitution elasticity is always one. So therefore, it's not possible to estimate the substitution elasticity or test hypotheses about substitution elasticity using the Cobb-Douglas functional form. So this, let, this uh, limitation with the substitution elasticity motivated then uh, the work in the late 60s and early 70s to develop the so-called flex flexible functional forms. And perhaps the most widely used nowadays is the uh, so-called translog, transcendental logarithmic uh, functional form. So notice that the translog can be seen as the extension of the Cobb-Douglas functional form. So it still has these, uh, these uh, betas and, and logarithm of inputs as the first order parameters, but the additional part is this uh, red colored uh, components in, in this equation. So we also take uh, the cross products of, of different uh, inputs measured in logs and their and the squared values, and we introduce parameters gamma for those second order parameters. So it can be shown that this uh, translocal functional form uh, um, is able to estimate also the substitution elasticity. So, so this is uh, why, why uh, Dvert refers to the translog and, and similar functional forms as, uh, as uh, second order flexible. Uh, however, we then, uh, by using the translog extension, we then lose the appealing interpretation of those beta parameters as the, as the output elasticities. So in this case, then the output elasticity is no longer a constant. So output elasticities depend on the level of inputs in the translog functional form. And also the scale elasticity is not so easily calculated. Also scale elasticity uh, depends on the... Scale elasticity is also not constant, but it depends on the level of inputs. So in practice, nowadays, the, the translog functional form is perhaps the most uh, widely used uh, uh, functional form in the in the stochastic frontier literature, but uh, in my following examples, I, I uh, focus on the Cobb-Douglas uh, functional form partly because of its uh, uh, appealing interpretation of those uh, beta parameters, but also because uh, then we keep the equations a little bit simpler and avoid this kind of uh, additional extension. So I simply note here that uh, uh, it's uh, uh, relatively easy to extend the Cobb-Douglas functional form to the more cl more general uh, translog case. So now notice that in this uh, um, classical economic uh, estimation of the production function, I have only included the random noise term. So there is not any kind of uh, uh, asymmetric inefficiency term present in this uh, this. Uh, models by Cobb and Douglas or, or Christensen, Jorgensen and Lau's contribution. So if you go then to the, to the efficiency literature, there is an um, earlier contribution by Dennis Aigner and, uh, and his co-author Chu, uh, where they'll consider parametric uh, formulation, but instead of using the, uh, the noise term, they have an inefficiency term. So in that sense, it's a deterministic model that uh, there is only inefficiency present, like in the DEA model, but no, no noise term. And uh, rather, in contrast to DEA, they also have the parametric specification of the production function, namely the Cobb-Douglas production function over here. So this is the so-called deterministic parametric uh, frontier approach. And uh, to, to estimate this model, there are two ways to, to do it. Uh, in this uh, taxonomy, I have considered both parametric programming and uh, 
uh, corrected OLS or sort of stepwise estimation. So let's consider first the parametric programming, which is the approach that uh, Egne and Schur actually use in the American Economic Review article. So um, uh, we can minimize the sum of squared of deviations between the actual output and the, and the value of the production function as in this uh, objective function and we, and we uh, sum over all observations i. But to enforce that this, uh, these uh, deviations must be less than or equal to uh, zero, so, so we can only allow of one side of deviations, then Egner and Schur impose this kind of inequality constraint. So notice that uh, without the constraint, of course, this, uh, this um, least squares problem would just boil down to the standard uh, linear regression estimated by ordinary least squares. But this uh, presence of this uh, inequality constraints for each observation i makes that, uh, that uh, we need to apply quadratic programming because there is not any, any, any closed form solution to this, uh, to this kind of constraint least squares problem. An alternative way of estimating this kind of uh, deterministic uh, model would be to, to resort to a stepwise estimation, which is referred to as uh, uh, corrected ordinary least squares. And uh, interestingly, this kind of approach was already suggested by, by Winston in his comments to Michael Farrell's 1957 paper. So the idea is really, really goes back to the, to the, uh, to the roots of the efficiency analysis. So instead of imposing those uh, sign constraints, we could also estimate the model alternatively by following two steps. So we could first um, just simply uh, apply ordinary least squares estimated to estimate the unconstrained problem. So simply fit these parameters alpha and betas uh, to, to the, to the center of the cloud of data and uh, subsequently then we can find the, uh, the largest, uh, largest residual and uh, we can then specify this intercept term such that, uh, that uh, we, we envelop all of the observations. So this can be called the corrected OLS or calls. So the idea is illustrated in this following diagram. So this diagram is taken from this uh, R tutorial for SFA prepared by uh, Sheng Dai, and it is available on the course website. So firstly, notice that on the uh, horizontal axis, we have the log of input X and the uh, vertical axis is uh, log of Y. So it is a both variable sign logarithmic scale. And the dots in the diagram illustrate the individual observations. So uh, if we fit the, the parameters of the Cobb-Douglas function with the, with the linear regression, we just need to fit the straight line to the, to the log transform data. So the idea of the corrected OLS is just then to shift the intercept term upwards so that all observations will be in the envelope. And there is this, uh, uh, one particular data point that, that uh, is on this broken line. So based on the regression residuals, that particular unit would be the best performer according to, the, according to this uh, Cobb-Douglas uh, production function model. And therefore, if uh, all deviations are one-sided, then we can shift the frontier at least to this uh, broken line and uh, envelop all the all the frontier. So therefore, the broken line then is uh, is this corrected ordinary least squares production function. The sl slope term beta and in in the multiple input case, all of the slope terms remain the same. So the only thing that what this corrected OLS is doing is this uh, uh, shifting this intercept term. And indeed. Uh, this suggests the immediate possibility that we could simply rely on the ordinary least squares regression and, and use the regression residuals for the, for the relative uh, performance evaluations or relative rankings. It's only if you want to have the magnitude of the inefficiency or the inefficiency loss, if you like, when we want to measure the uh, magnitude of efficiency, only that 
task would require that we, we shift this intercept term alpha either to the, to the highest uh, um, best performer or in more stochastic fashion or probabilistic fashion to certain other value. But for the task of identifying the best performer or making relative rankings, uh, the order and least squares residuals would be just fine. So we will then proceed to the, to the basics of the stochastic frontier analysis in the next lesson where I will introduce then the, the um, uh, asymmetric inefficiency term together with the, with the random noise term.